Welcome inside Archbishop Wood High School. It's the site of Philadelphia Catholic League basketball on a Friday night. Traditional rivals, Archbishop Wood hosts LaSalle College High School. We'll bring you now inside our broadcast booth to tell you a little bit about it. Bob Long alongside me, Danny Rovey, and just off screen is Brady Joyce, who will help us with the camera this evening. Well, Danny, it's been a tough year for LaSalle. Two wins in the Philadelphia Catholic League. We talked about it prior to the St. Joe's prep game last weekend. They probably needed to win three out of five games down the stretch to get to the playoffs. Okay, now it's three out of four, and it's a tough weekend. On the road at Archbishop Wood, on the road at Roman Catholic, and then next weekend traveling to Archbishop Carroll and traveling to Archbishop Bryant. It's a different LaSalle team, but it's a game that LaSalle won last year on their home floor, an emotional contest, and a big game for Horace Simmons, who, do, who remains with this LaSalle team this year. Obviously, a lot of those cast of characters, Nick Verano, uh, as well as Sam Brown and others, no longer there. But, you know, an important thing for, I think, him, one last stand, trying to make that last run. Can he and the supporting cast around him? bring one more performance out here this evening. Yeah, of course, Bob, you know, that's a great point. Uh, Horace Simmons had a phenomenal game. That was a home court win the Explorers had over the Vikings of Archbishop Wood. That was a court stormer right there. Uh, we saw a head coach, John Mosco, ejection. So a lot of anti We love John game. Mosco. Of course, though. he's a legend of the Philadelphia area. Um, and and he's, he's, you know, near and dear in all of our hearts as PCL basketball fans. Um, that was a phenomenal game. And, you know, at least for LaSalle, you know, they've been on uh, a little bit of a, uh, of a tough stretch recently. Um, now, you know, as we get closer and closer uh, to PCL playoff season, you know, this becomes an increasingly more important game for Archbishop Wood. Uh, they find themselves, I believe, uh, sixth place, uh, correct, Bob, in the uh, yeah, PCL standing? Yep. That's exactly oh, tied for right. fifth. Yeah, so tied for fifth. Um, so they are hoping on a win over LaSalle tonight and then um, a loss, I would believe, for West Catholic playing at Ryan. Yeah, and um, the other thing to look at the standings as well, that's obviously important for seeding. But this game tonight, Archbishop Wood then has a Monday night contest at St. Joe's Prep, who you see on the standings right here is one game ahead. So not just the opportunity to try to host a playoff game, a quarterfinal game in the Catholic League, which is really important, but look at the schools above them. St. Joe's Prep and Roman Catholic, both 6A schools, where only two teams from the 6A in the PCL get that automatic opportunity to go to the PIAA playoffs. So, you know, it's not just a, P a PCL situation. This is a PIAA situation for a team that returns a lot of starters from a state runner-up last year. This is a team that has to win and win big down the stretch just to qualify again. Shows you how challenging the Philadelphia Catholic League is. Of course, Bob, you know, it's so challenging. And, you know, we're in this gym right now, and you can kind of feel uh, a lot of the legendary banners that are hung around us. Uh, this team does as much damage in the PIAA playoffs as they do in the PCL playoffs. So this game uh, getting increasingly more important for the Vikings here. We have a full slate of awesome PCL play tonight. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. For Archbishop Wood, led by Jaleel Bethea, who was a super sub last year. Sixth man, first man off the bench, and hit 37 points, 11 threes in a state quarterfinal. And now you think about him, he's now thrust into that leadership type of role. Carson Howard returns, Josh Reed has taken a larger role on this team, and really just a tremendous group of guys, Milan Dean, Deuce Maxey, stepping into sort of high JV, low varsity roles, into there now those first guys off the bench, sometimes even starting. So John Mosco, it's rinse and repeat for him. The young guys become old, the juniors and sophomores that had big roles the last year become the leaders, and this is a team that stays right near the top of the Catholic League and the PIAA. Yeah, Bob, I can't agree more with that. And extending on that point made by uh, Joe Lobafea, um, a phenomenal player. And if you know me, you know how much I love Syracuse basketball. He is one of the top recruits coming out of this junior class right now. Um, it, you know, if you're unaware, Bob, uh, earlier this week, um, Booster at Syracuse uh, by the name of Adam Weitzman, uh, he offered uh, Bethea a six-figure NIL deal and brought him up for the uh, UNC game at the Carrier Dome. So uh, just, I mean, all things considered, uh, Jaleel Bethea is a, a recruit 
that is wanted by numerous schools in the ACC, Big Ten, SEC, Pac-12, all over the place. Um, he's definitely the key of this Wood team. And then, you know, he's it, that's built around a lot of great players. Um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of uh, Deuce Maxey, the sophomore, uh, the guard, and then also Josh Reed as well among, you know, Milan Dean and a lot of other players. So this is, again, like you said, it's rinse and repeat. It's another stacked roster, another year for John Moscow. And for LaSalle, they're led by Horace Simmons Jr. He's headed to Drexel next year. His soon-to-be teammate, Justin Moore, who was a senior guard last year for this Archbishop Wood team, hit a game winner to take down the upstart College of Charleston team that's been ranked for the vast majority of the season. He won that game at the DAC last night, repping Archbishop Wood proud. And uh, Horace Simmons Jr. will join Justin Moore and a cavalcade of other talented players at Drexel next year. Beyond Horace Simmons Jr., it really is by committee here for LaSalle. Casey Fleming, a sophomore who has been excellent in recent games. He's gotten more and more aggressive. His sister goes to school and is a, was a big player for many years here at Archbishop Wood. Unfortunately, I think she's still down with an injury, but has been a star for Archbishop Wood for a long time. So familial ties for this contest as well. Hayes Altamare. Uh, James Barchak has been really good. And, and then there's there's these other guys that come off the bench. Ryan Warren, Mick McKee has come off the bench. Nick Parisi dominated the JV game this evening. So LaSalle, they're going to have to do it with balance. They're going to have to give somebody uh, give, give somebody an opportunity to take that secondary scorer role and allow Horace Simmons Jr. to have better opportunities to shoot the basketball with less contest. Yeah, Bob, you know, one person, like you said, in that secondary role that I loved the uh, last game uh, against Father Judge, and, you know, it was a, a really uh, key positive uh, for the Explorers was Nick Parisi's play, and I think that he did a great job. He was just completely ferocious getting to the basket. Um, he was able to be, you know, ha have a lot of success with the dribble drive. He was able to facilitate the paint really well, and for his size, he really uses that to his advantage. He's crafty, he's shifty, he gets the job done for the Explorers, and I love what I've seen so far from a player like him. We'll be back for tip-off in just a few minutes. It's LaSalle against Archbishop Wood. Thrilled to be here. Bob Long Sports coverage of Catholic League basketball. Stay with us. Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we will share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously, the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above, and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration, and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage's dedicated done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time. Hmm. But it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make. Hmm. Some of which may impact your business for the next decade. 
you know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest, no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest? Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at Gola Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. Gola gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design. Relocation planning and budgeting. Helping you manage your vendors. Construction oversight. All with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value. Value that flows right to your bottom line. Gola gets it. We've been partnering with... Pretty darn cool there. The national anthem played on the electric guitar. Patrick McEwen, Archbishop Wood student, getting us ready for this one. Now let's meet the explorers of LaSalle. James Barchak, a senior guard, introduced first. Hayes Altamari, one of the young stars up and coming on this team for LaSalle, provides a bit of length and hit the three-point shot. Horace Simmons, Jr., number 23, the team's leading scorer and leading rebounder. Casey Fleming, a sophomore, homecoming of sorts for him as he has family going to school here at Archbishop Wood. And then Tim Jennings. Jennings is a senior big who Danny has only gotten better and better as the year has gone along. Of course, you know, we saw again, uh, you know, throughout the season, uh, Tim Jennings, a player, uh, increases tenacity up in the paint. He's done a great job for the Explorers facilitating. And here come the Archbishop Wood Vikings, dressed in white. Milan Dean introduced first, number three. Here's Josh Reed. Developing offensive game, but an excellent on-ball defender makes life difficult for the opposing team's best guard. Gus Salem, transfer. He's been really good in his first year with Archbishop Wood. There's Carson Howard, the big man, double-double machine here at the high school level. And Jalil Bethea, one of the best guards in the Philadelphia Catholic League, and on any given night, maybe the best shooter in the entire league. Yeah, of course, Bob. You know, this, uh, this team's full of shooters. They're full of a lot of uh, offensive talent. Uh, this is a team that scored 90 points against that great New Ready defense. So these, this team knows how to score. Ranked the number 11th team in the state of Pennsylvania. Good looking crowd here tonight. It is Jersey night, and I think some of our guys might even be part of determining the winner. Yeah, so of course, uh, I think, what, a new pair of kicks and perhaps a Colin Gillespie Archbishop Wood jersey might be on the line. That's what John Mosco was telling us pregame. Wow. A lot on the line tonight, Bob. Love to see it. Freddie, would you do the honors? Would you do the honors of, uh, of uh, the Jersey night, crowning the Jersey night champion here? 
I think we might get the call down later. All right. Yeah, well. Halftime, third quarter, not sure. We'll, sum, we'll be summoned uh, when we're summoned. Our cameraman, ladies and gentlemen, Brady Joyce. This is his domain over here. <laughs> Happer Horsham, Archbishop Wood. Well, Sal in dark blue and Archbishop Wood in white were underway. Two 6A teams going at it. LaSalle fighting for a playoff spot. They'll need two, probably three wins in the next four to get there. Archbishop Wood looking to put themselves in a position to qualify as the second team out of 6A to the PIAA playoffs and hoping to host a first-round Catholic League playoff game. There's Horace Simmons Jr. getting the scoring underway. Yeah, Horace Simmons off the rip, little jump shot. That's exactly what you need right there. It would just create a little bit of separation. He does that so well when he's down low. LaSalle starts in a 2-3 zone. Got Salem in and out. And that's the challenge in a zone. You can coerce some deep threes. There's a travel. But keep an eye, Danny, on the number of offensive rebounds that LaSalle gives up while in the zone. Of course, you know, uh, Bob. As a Syracuse fan, you should yes. know all about that. I was that. just going to say, yeah, it's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's one of the keys to uh, Coach Jim Beheim's game, uh, you know, up, up north in Syracuse. Um, you know, there's definitely benefits and drawbacks to running a 2-3. Uh, a I mean, obviously the offensive rebounds can become a little bit of a liability, but at the same time, um, a team like Wood, you know, a lot, of, a lot of scoring threats here, you can maybe block off a couple of those driving lanes um, that could be presented by some guards. Horace Simmons Jr. for three. It's good. That's a shot I love to see Horace Simmons Jr. taking. Two for two from the field for Horace Simmons. A great start. Knows it's his last time playing at Archbishop Wood. They've had some classics in Horace Simmons' four years. Julio Bethea, another offensive rebound. Make it three offensive rebounds, and Carson Howard is fouled. Yeah, already, Bob. This uh, this hard pitch of wood team is playing with uh, an unmatched level of tenacity um, off the glass. That was Carson Howard able to, to, to fight for that one, put it back up, and uh, send the charity stripe. Howard has begun to improve from the foul stripe this year. Was well under 50% last year. Important for him to become proficient as much as he can at the stripe because, Danny, it's a volume game. He finds himself banging around inside and getting lots of opportunities at the stripe, and he goes two for two. You know, Sal met with some pressure here, uh, three-quarters court. Um, that pressure is something that they've, uh, you know, they've found some struggle in, um, you know, early in the season. Able to break it pretty well. Fleming got the defender in the air. Hayes out to Mare, and LaSalle is on fire. Three for three from the field. Yeah, wow, out to Mare right there. A great look, almost like it was off one leg. He was able to knock that one down easily. And here we go. Milan Dean for three. Perhaps a shootout underway in Warminster. 5.43 to go first quarter. Jennings wants the ball. Good position ahead of time. Bangs away. Excellent footwork. Yeah, it's that game uh, that we'd love to see from Jennings, time in and time out. He's able to just create a little bit of space off of the contact, use that to his advantage, send him to the glass. And how about that finish? Josh Reed. Yeah, Josh Reed, silky smooth right there. A little bit of a friendly bounce for Archbishop Wood. This is Philadelphia Catholic League basketball right here. High level stuff. You'd love to see it, Bob. Pack gym on a Friday night. This is the place to be. Here's Horace Simmons Jr. Rises and a little too strong. That's Jaleel Bethea snatching it. Bethea past the first defender. Contact and it's a block. Tim Jennings called for the personal foul. And Jaleel Bethea will shoot two at the line. Yeah, fast-paced player right there. Uh, you know, perhaps a player like Jennings just didn't have his feet set in time. Also, a little bit of movement before the contact as well. That could influence that call. Jaleel Bethea forcing the issue. Yeah, Bethea, one of the most uh, 
elite scorers, I would say, in the entire conference. Um, he's able to get the ball in the basket any way he can. Well, and you see why. James Barchak guarding him out just inside the logo. Folks might be thinking, why are you guarding him out there? Well, you have he, to. he just took a three from out there, and he's shown as a proficiency from NBA range. That's right. A high level score to say the absolute least. I think I saw somebody guarding him when he stepped out of his vehicle this evening as well. <laughs> Just in case, you know? Oh, Bob, He's we have always jokes. in range. We have jokes all night long. This is Casey Fleming. Salem works hard through that ball screen. Tim Jennings, that's way too strong. Here comes Josh Reed firing that one almost through the double doors. Yeah, Josh Reed's right there looking for the breakaway out. Carson Howard, he had the open lane pass just a little bit too strong there, but a nice look regardless. Those double doors, by the way, played a pivotal role in a contest that we broadcast here for the Diane Mosco Foundation shootout, one of our favorite events every single year. Kavar Kennedy from Father Judge hit a game-winning three against Central York on this side of the floor. Ball came loose, it's gonna stay with LaSalle. Simmons Jr. thought he was hit, certainly reacted as if he was. Hit the game winner, did Kennedy. And then Father Judge mauled him all the way down. Fans rushed the floor, he ended up outside the double doors and almost in the parking lot upon celebration. Well, I would say this, uh, this, this uh, floor and gym is uh, one of the most legendary in the conference, even the city for that matter. So much history taking place at uh, Archbishop Wood throughout the years of high school basketball. There's a grab called against Reed. Tremendous on-ball defender. That time he put two hands on the ball handler. Double team comes on Fleming. Now Jennings. One-on-one -on -one with Howard, and Howard blocked that one. Jennings right there lobbying for a foul call, just can't get that one, it looked clean to me. Extra pass, Gus Salem for three. Archbishop Wood stays man-to-man, 3.09 to play first quarter. Deep three for Horace Simmons, Jr. Jaleel Bethea, he's fouled by Tim Jennings. That is the second personal foul against Tim Jennings. Call made on the floor. Yeah, for a player like Bethea, Bob, uh, you know, he, he moves so fast. It's a hard player to keep up with, and, you know, a lot of fouls are drawn uh, in the tradition of guarding him. So Ryan Warren and Ryan Sorge checks in. Deuce Maxey checks into the game number four. He stands upon the baseline at the three-point line. This is Bethea, guarded by James Barchak. Josh Reed. Somehow gets all the way to the hoop. Spectacular. Yeah, beautiful play right there by Josh Reed. Student section is roaring over here, Bob. Phenomenal move to the basket. Even saw a little bit of contact on the wrist right there. Not a problem for a player of that caliber. Brian Warren stays with it. He's blocked a second time. The foul is called against Milan Dean. It looked clean up top at first glance. It did. Let's have another look at this one, Bob. You see Dean forces Warren, and it, again, it looks good. Yeah. Warren takes advantage. You know, Warren has been a key player for the, the Explorers, and you know, back uh, this game after um, he was inactive, uh, the Father Judge game, uh, last week uh, this time. Um, it's, an, it's an important player to have back. Two for two, Ryan Warren, the sophomore. 
You see the sophomore class here for LaSalle with Casey Fleming and Ryan Warren and Hayes Altamare. We saw Nick Parisi and all his exploits in the JV game. He was fantastic. Nick McKee, who's on the floor right now. And that's McKee getting the steal. That was last touch by LaSalle. Mike McKee, head coach for LaSalle, arguing, hey, that went off the knee of Jaleel Bethea, and it might have. Triple drive. Count it. And one. Milan Dean. And I actually think Warren was good until he brings that arm down right there. Yep, I agree. Yeah, you know, you jump with a player like that in air, you know, you're going to get some contact. But, you know, a player like Milan Dean Bob, he's so, he's so fierce when he goes to the basket. The contact does not mean much to him. You know, you saw that composure, um, you know, maintained throughout that entire play. And I honestly think that uh, Milan Dean is one of the most underrated players uh, in the PCL for, for that very reason. Archbishop Wood withstood an opening 8-2 spurt for LaSalle. Now they lead 14-12, a minute 40 to play in the first quarter. Archbishop Wood remains in a man-to-man -man defense. Ryan Warren defended all the way beyond the three-point line by Carson Howard. Horace Simmons, Jr. Warren, got it. Yeah, that's a really difficult shot right there for uh, the sophomore Ryan Warren to make, but beautiful stroke right there, makes it look effortless. Just a little bit of a discard there, not enough for the referee to call the offensive foul. Adroitly creating space. That time, Ryan Sorge stands in. Josh Reed picks up the personal. What a selfless play right there by Ryan Sorge. Something we've seen a lot from this LaSalle team. You know, their ability to, to, you know, risk their body, put it down in the paint, and take the charge. That was beautifully done. High-level effort for a team down in the standings, needing a couple of upsets in the last two weekends to find their way into the playoffs. Yeah, Bob, you know, right now is a time in the season where, you know, if you're a team like the deal with South College High School Explorers, it's time to lock in, you know, and it's time to, you know, shake up the standings a little bit, you know what I mean? And, and for so many, uh, so many fans, so many uh, people that have counted this team out, you know, it's, it's, I think it's time uh, for the Explorers to prove them wrong. Michael Green just checked into the game, number two. What a look for Jaleel Bethea. That was halfway down. The foul will keep it here. Ryan Warren fouls Carson Howard. Great look for Bethea. He doesn't miss many from there. Howard discards and gets the rebound amongst three LaSalle Explorer defensive rebounds. 29 seconds left in the quarter. And Archbishop Wood can hold for the last shot if they elect to. Instead, Green, open three, it's good. And Michael Green right there, firing that one off from downtown. Amazing Down. look right there for the Vikings. It's an amazing look. Six seconds left, Fleming. Down to two seconds. Parisi's got to let it go, and he won't. Archbishop Wood traps in the corner. And they end the first quarter in a heck of a fashion, outscoring LaSalle 15 to six in the final five or six minutes. This portion of today's game is brought to you by Next Play Basketball, an AAU basketball organization run by our buddies Ryan Ansel and Matt Paul. Ryan Ansel is an assistant here for LaSalle. Ryan Ansel and Matt Paul, they do a great job with fourth through 12th grade boys and girls AAU teams. They also do group clinics, individual instruction, and they do uh, 
everything to make you be a better basketball player. So if you want to play at the next level, maybe you're a great schooler that wants to play in high school. Go to Next Play Basketball on Twitter, on Facebook for more information. Also want to tell you about CJO Design and Construction in North Wales. Uh, they're a great, uh, great landscape contracting firm. They help my wife and me and our home do a wonderful job uh, with uh, cutting down some trees, clearing out some brush, planting some grass, doing some new mulch. They can also help you with a patio, a deck, or a pool. Chad Ormond is the leading man over at CJO Design and Construction. He and his staff will take care of you. Tell them that Bob Longsport sent you. I know it's about 10 degrees out there tonight, but spring will be here before you know it. So important to call and visit their website so you can get on the schedule. Tell them that we sent you. Archbishop Wood, they retain this three-point lead coming out in the second quarter. LaSalle back into that zone. This time 3-2. Salem lost the ball. Wood is back very well. Fleming doesn't care. Count it and one. One on three to the 10. Fleming too strong. Huge look for Fleming right there. Too strong is an understatement. Look at that. It would have run down, draws enough contact. That's an obvious call. And one opportunity here for the sophomore. Deuce Maxi picks up the personal. Fourth team foul against the Vikings. James Barchak replaces the shooter, Fleming. And now the five is Mick McKee. Nick Parisi, James Barchak, and then the seniors deep as well. Ryan Sorge, Horace Simmons Jr. Green, open three. It's good. He's two for two from beyond the arc. Yeah, two for two. Another excellent stroke right there by Michael Green. That last three he pulled up from afar. This one was from respectable range, and it's not a problem for a player like that. And Mick McKee carried the basketball turnover on that other possession. That's exactly how you beat the zone. This is a look here at the carry. Get the ball to the center of the zone, collapse multiple defenders, kick out to a volume three-point shooter in rhythm. Yeah, that perimeter sometimes, Bobby, can be left wide open. And, you know, if you have a team full of shooters, it's a good idea to let it rip. Deuce Maxey couldn't get the shooter's roll. Not a bad look from 10 feet away. No, not at all. So Sal's team uh, still met with uh, a fierce man-to-man -man coverage. Ryan Sorge and now Horace Simmons Jr. Simmons Jr. some contact wasn't called. That one saved inbounds by Jaleel Bethea. Yeah, convincing, uh, convincing argument there made by uh, Simmons, uh, thinking that he drew the contact. Uh, you know, I, I don't think that's too far-fetched um, of a missed call, but just tell the tale sometimes. Heat check from Green. 6.05 to play first half. Archbishop, would they stay in that man-to-man -man defense? And we got a bump down low. Jaleel Bethea will pick up the personal foul. I'm sure that was one of the notes on uh, the game plan here for the Vikings of Archbishop Wood is, uh, you know, to tightly guard a player like Horace Simmons. He had an electric game against uh, Father Judge, some highlight plays, but also some great fundamental plays. Um, and he was able to knock a lot of those shots down. So I'm sure that was on the, uh, the drawing board for the Vikings. Horace Simmons Jr. creating space, but picks up his dribble in a tough spot. He's got to put it up. And James Barchak is there. Good finish. Wow, Barchak right there. Obviously not the biggest player on the court, but he's one of the hardest workers. Able to grab that one and throw it back up right after.
Jaleel Bethea loves to go to his left. And James Barchak there to pull it away from Howard. LaSalle doesn't have the numbers. They trail by one. Five minutes and five seconds to play in the first half. It's been a good one here from Warminster. Fleming almost finished it, and it'll be Archbishop Wood basketball. It's still a great effort there by Casey Fleming. That's what's going to take for, uh, for a team like LaSalle to beat this, uh, this Wood team. It's just to hang in every possession. You're the more athletic team. You're the more determined team. You have more drive. That's what it's going to take here for the Explorers, and they're sticking in this game. And if they can continue that, that level of tenacity, uh, good things will follow. An upset here tonight would really change the paradigm in the Philadelphia Catholic League playoff discussion and Archbishop Wood's PIAA state playoff hopes. St. Joe's Prep has already beaten Father Judge. That's Josh Reed off the glass. It was a four o'clock tip at St. Joe's Prep. Kelly Fieldhouse. Prep was down in that one, Bob, right? They were able to come back. It was pretty tight. It was snip and tuck for a good portion of the game. They pulled away in the third quarter. I tuned in for a little bit uh, at the start of the third. Timeout on the floor. Chance for us to tell you about Jim McLaughlin and Carrie Garen Boyle of the Carrie Garen Boyle team at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Fox and Roach Realtors. They're our favorite realtors in the LaSalle community. We certainly appreciate their sponsorship of Bob Long Sports, of LaSalle, and of high school athletes. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, either now in six months or in 12 months, give them a call. Their information is below. The greatest thing about working with Jim and Carrie, particularly when you tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you, is you get two realtors for the price of one. Two realtors to help you see homes, two realtors to help you negotiate the documents and to make sure that you're doing right for what's for you and your family. Jim and Carrie are excellent professionals. They do a lot of volume. And what that means is that they know the market well, they know the players, they know when homes are going on the market. And if you're looking to sell your home, they know how to extract that value for you, for your future and for your family. Give them a call, tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you, and we really appreciate their sponsorship. Bob, we've said it uh, before um, at football games earlier this year, but uh, I don't think we've ever seen a cow on the court before. What a sight right there. <laughs> That was a tip into the backcourt. Four minutes and 10 seconds to play in the second quarter. Giveaway. Reed. Dean kept it in, and now Horace Simmons, along with three other explorers, will come through. There was contact, and it wasn't called. That'll stay here. Yeah. Another look. Casey Fleming took a big hit on his way through the lane. That was a big hit right there, uh, driving up. But I mean, I guess the ref's going for the let the kids play approach. Well, Sal have the ball regardless, but uh, you know that could be a scoring opportunity for Fleming. Horace Simmons Jr. all the way to the ten. It's a big time finish. Yeah, Horace Simmons, uh, you know, rightfully uh, displeased by the also the lack of call on that one. Definitely bumped on his way up. No good that time, and kept in by Barchak. Josh Reed went for the double pump rather than staying up strong. Simmons chasing his own shot. LaSalle leads by one. Yeah, Simmons, beautiful shot. He's able to put on a show against this Archbishop Wood team. That's well long, and Ryan Sorge there for the box out. A technical foul has been called against Mike McKee. I 
I don't know. That, is that just because McKee maybe got in the way of the official Could there? Could have been onto the court there. Yeah, there could be called for a multitude of reasons. Three minutes left here in the second quarter, and Jaleel Bethea. Two shots and the ball for Archbishop Wood, 3.01 to play. to go. Bethea, a step back, and that's well long, but Howard is all alone there on the far side. Horace Simmons tried to contest. Too strong. Yeah, in the paint, a player like Carson Howard may have the matchup over any player on this court using that size as advantage on that play. That'll be the sixth team foul against Archbishop Wood. A big two minutes and 40 seconds here for LaSalle. They have struggled at the end of quarters at times and trying to hang in this one, live to see the second half and pull an upset. And I think Horace Simmons was hit there. Yeah, I, I saw that contact too, uh, Bob. You know, you can see a little shift in the arm right there on the shot. Horace wow. Simmons takes it away. Hayes out to Mare. Projection from Simmons right there. And he has the ball back here. LaSalle, another scoring opportunity. What a swat right there. I cannot get over that play. I mean, Horace Simmons came out of nowhere, Bob. And set a, that one back. And a great job to put the ball back into the offensive set, not rush. Fleming, great finish. That right there is a textbook sequence for the Explorers. That is exactly what you need if you're LaSalle. Great block by Simmons Jr., but Hayes Altamare, without numbers, pulled it back and started the offensive set. Big bucket there from Casey Fleming. 100 seconds to play in the half. Milan Dean, tough shot and finish. Wow, wow, Milan Dean right there, picking up the foul, a bump on Fleming. What do we got there? A technical yep. foul has yep. been called. Yeah, yeah it, was the, uh, it was the contact right there. Um, that right there is a discipline call, Bob. That is a discipline call. And, you know, obviously a player like that charged up. That was an electric play. Um, just something that you can't find yourself doing. This, this is a big rivalry here. Yep. Last year had its own theatrics. We talked about that in the open. Here we go again, two technical fouls in less than 16 minutes of basketball. One of my favorite rivalries in the conference, Bob. That's to say the absolute least. Now we've lost all power. Wow. Well, not all power. We're fortunate that we got our power. <laughs> I sure it's hope that's the case. But scoreboard power it seems to be <laughs> malfunctioning at the moment. Well, I can tell you, it's 27 apiece and a minute and 30 or so to play in the first half. Yeah, both coaches can use this as a little time to, to game plan right now as they try and figure out the technical situation here. Well, if there are any uh, electrical contractors oh. out there, we'd love to invite you to sponsor Bob Long Sports. <laughs> but in the meantime, we'll tell you about our buddies at E&M Insurance in North Wales. Run by Chris Marr, class of 1989, sent two sons through LaSalle, and does a great job for all his clients on the property and casualty side. Visit them at eandminsurance.com or visit them on Facebook for more information. Tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you. One twenty-four to play. LaSalle and Archbishop Wood deadlocked. And a near giveaway. Indeed it is. Josh Reed. Count it. And one. Josh Reed with the stare down after the dunk right there. Bob, we talk about this rivalry. We can see it full-fledged right here. That's how Archbishop Wood beats you. 
Stellar half court defense leads to the transition. High flyer, Josh Reed. Just over a minute here for the Explorers to do some damage. Ryan Swords, no good from three. Some friendly fire from Archbishop Wood. Yeah, LaSalle right there, able to retain possession. That's huge right there. One score game, less than a minute to play. It's a huge scoring opportunity for the Explorers. Isan Bea checks in for Archbishop Wood. Simmons Jr. for three. Simmons Jr. silky smooth right there off the catch and shoot. That's pro stuff right there, Bob. Simmons Jr. banging away inside with Carson Howard. 35 seconds left. Michael Green, perhaps hunting his own shot. 20 seconds left. And Archbishop Wood can reset offensively. Salem for three. And who's this one last touched by? It's going to be LaSalle wow, basketball. LaSalle basketball. 8.7 seconds left. They lead by one. Marcus Dixon checks in for defensive purposes. Carson Howard will check out. Marcus Dixon, the uh, Clemson commit tight end. Football, that is, <laughs> of course. Five seconds left for Casey Fleming. He gets all the way to the basket. It's blocked by Deuce Maxey. And that'll end the first half. What a first half it was. LaSalle comes on the road and takes a one-point lead to the break against Archbishop Wood. Danny, your thoughts? Wow, well, Bob, it has been nothing but an entertaining first half of basketball right here. This is exactly what you want. You have a team coming in on the road. Rivalry, highly anticipated game, and this has been nothing short of entertaining. Uh, great scoring contest by both sides. Uh, it's going to be a fun second half, to say the absolute least. What a game, and what an atmosphere here at Archbishop Wood. Bob Long, Danny Rovey, and Brady Joyce, your broadcast team. Stay with us, and we'll be back. Like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know GOLA. GOLA gets it. At Meineke, we care about your family. So this winter, let Meineke keep your car on the road, saving time and money. Take advantage of Meineke's complete auto repair services. Whether it's tires, brakes, exhaust, or tune-ups, at Meineke, we do it all. And all services are backed by Meineke's nationwide guarantee. Whatever car repairs you need, come to Meineke. Because at your locally owned and operated Meineke, we do car care right. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! <laughs> Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line. And our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination to keep this football, or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Perangeli, our guest picker for the evening. Dunphy 4.
Dunphy Ford is Mayfair's neighborhood Ford store. Nobody knows your neighborhood like Dunphy Ford. Nearly 40 years. Right here on Frankfurt Avenue. Generation after generation, our neighbors continue to be our customers. We have access to the cars and trucks you want with financing you need. Dumpy Ford is Northeast Philly's first choice for America's number one brand. 7700 Frankfurt Avenue in Mayfair. Online at www.dumpyford.com. Come experience the Dumpy difference. You'll be glad you did. My name is Patrick Donahue, a franchise consultant with FranChoice, the premier network of franchise consultants in America. FranChoice is a company that helps people find a franchise business that's the perfect fit for them. We work with the people who want to own a business but don't really know how to find one that's both a top-notch opportunity and a great match. We specialize in franchise opportunities with the following three characteristics. Low investment, high margin, and rapid break-evens. The best thing about our service is that it's free to the public. We're paid by franchise companies for this service. The process is simple. First we do an introduction, then the candidate provides me with information. We have a consultation based on that information, and we build what's called the model. Once we have that model, we'll share that with three great opportunities that match your criteria. I will follow up with you through the entire process. Obviously the best opportunities fit the criteria mentioned above, and the right way to find those opportunities is to spend some time with the people who work with the very best franchise companies looking to expand in your local area. I'm humbled by your consideration and I look forward to speaking with you soon. They said it couldn't be done, but somehow CCM was able to close this home in just 21 days. Carl, how'd you pull this off? Oh, hard work, dedication, grinding. Were you ever worried? Well, you know, Chloe, they pinned us in deep in the second bedroom, uh, inspection issues, but we regrouped. Knew there was still a lot in play. Well, I'm sure the Franklins were pleasantly surprised. We got a good organization here. A lot to look forward to. Good luck with the next close. And there you have it. Cross Country Mortgage is dedicated to getting it done. So, it's time for your business to renew your lease. Or perhaps you're right-sizing or relocating. This can be an exciting time. Hmm. But it's also a major project to undertake. Hundreds of decisions to make. Hmm. Some of which may impact your business for the next decade. You know you need an expert on your side from start to finish. What if this expert had no conflicts of interest, no landlords to answer to, and a fiduciary responsibility to work solely in your best interest? Someone who knows the questions to ask, the levers to pull, the pitfalls to avoid. Enter the experts at GOLA Corporate Real Estate. They've seen it all over the course of thousands of transactions in dozens of industries. GOLA gets it. And what if those experts came with a team? Subject matter experts to manage everything that comes with this process. Space planning and design. Relocation planning and budgeting. Helping you manage your vendors. Construction oversight. All with zero out-of-pocket cost to you. A turnkey experience that adds real value. Value that flows right to your bottom line. GOLA gets it. We've been partnering with clients like you for over 40 years, and we know what's important. Solving problems, creating flexibility, protecting and stretching your dollars. Philadelphia-based with a national presence. Get to know GOLA. GOLA gets it. At Meineke, we care about your family. So this winter, let Meineke keep your car on the road, saving time and money. Take advantage of Meineke's complete auto repair services. Whether it's tires, brakes, exhaust, or tune-ups, at Meineke, we do it all. And all services are backed by Meineke's nationwide guarantee. Whatever car repairs you need, come to Meineke. Because at your locally owned and operated Meineke, we do car care right. What does this win mean? Been with the family for a long time. With our team chemistry, it was bound to happen. Just close, baby! <laughs> Such a big win from Cross Country Mortgage. Dedicated to getting it done. 
Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report. Good evening, everybody. Welcome into the Nittany Lions Sports Report live on Bob Long Sports. Today, we're going to talk about the offensive line and our man of the hour, the chef, the man himself. This year, you're going to see all four guys run. They all bring a different style. The quarterback is going to read the defensive end's eyes and make a determination. Am I going to keep this football or am I going to hand it off to the running back? And that is generally the point of the RPO. Look who we have. We have Chris Ferangeli, our guest picker for the evening. The coaches at LaSalle are great because they strive for you to be your best. I was able to maximize my full potential in terms of opportunity in football, wrestling, and lacrosse. They're going to be pushed to be the best they can be in the classroom, on the field, in the pool, and just overall as a person. Student first, athlete second. Before you have success on the field, you have to have success in the classroom so you can be on the field. One thing I think makes LaSalle Athletics stand out are the facilities that we have. Welcome you back here inside Archbishop Wood High School. The Vikings trail at home to LaSalle, 30 to 29. Back inside the broadcast booth, Bob Long and Danny Rovey. Danny, what was the main takeaway from half number one? An upset potentially brewing here on a Friday night. Of course, Bob, an upset brewing, and we've seen firsthand tonight that the rivalry here is still intact, and then some technicals on both sides. They, both teams have been jabbing at each other left and right. Um, it's been score and score, possession and possession. This game's been high powered and the second half is gonna allude to that as well. I think for Archbishop Wood, it's hey, can they beat the zone of LaSalle? They've gone into and out of a zone multiple times, changing defenses. And the ability to get the ball into the center of that zone, kick it out, you got some great three-point shooters. Jaleel Bethea, Michael Green, you know that Deuce Maxey can get going. He hasn't really yet. There's a depth to that Archbishop Wood team. They can go eight, nine deep. Even Bea can come in and give you good minutes off the bench. So can LaSalle hang with them for a full 32 minutes? Yeah, of course. Are they going to be worn down at any point? Or is this Horace Simmons game where, hey, it's been a tough year for Simmons Jr. He's been the focal point of every defense. But can he be the guy to carry LaSalle across the finish line and keep those playoff hopes alive? I think, Horace, keys. I think Horace Simmons has always had a fun time against his Archbishop Wood team, Bob. That's all I'm going to say. He's a great player. Uh, he knows how to play against this team, and he always seems to put on a show, and he's you know in the midst of doing that right now. We're witnessing it. And we'll take one more look here at the standings before we get underway in the second half. Archbishop Wood in a tie for fifth in the Philadelphia Catholic League. St. Joe's Prep right above them, also a 6A club. They won today, so Archbishop Wood needs to win this game to keep pace, essentially. Yep. Both for playoff seeding and to put themselves in a position to be that second team out of the 6A from District 12, from the Keith PCL and the Catholic League playoffs and, and, and beyond in the PIAA. So that is the scenario. And we are underway in the third. Bob Long, Danny Rovey and Brady Joyce. So Bob, quickly uh, here interjecting with some score updates. Uh, Horace Simmons Jr. with 14, James Barchak with two, Ryan Warren with four, Casey Fleming with five, Hayes Altamara with three, and uh, Tim Jennings with two. For the Vikings of Archbishop Wood, uh, we have Jalobathea uh, with three, Michael Green with six, his two threes, uh, Milan Dean with 10 points leading the Vikings, Josh Reed with six, and Carson Howard with four. And Simmons Jr. turned the ball over on the first possession of the second half. Open three for Milan Dean, it's good. Add to that total, make it 13 right there. Electric three, open it up, Vikings. Pick and pop action. Jennings sat early in that first half with two personal fouls. He returns to the floor. Horace Simmons, everything but the finish. Great luck for Jaleel Bethea, count it, and one. It's a soft one from Casey Fleming. And Archbishop Wood, a dream start to the second. 
Yeah, unlucky foul right there. And in the process of shooting, the ref says, that'll send him to the line. And that's a good call. That, that is. I, I is think definitely. He was, he was on his way up, right? And, you know, you're trying to jab at the ball. But when the player starts that shooting motion, that's, uh, that's without question a shooting foul. Uh, not the reach in, like uh, some would argue. Tough go about here for the Explorers, uh, opening up the second half, but game is within reach. It's two scores. This team has battled adversity all year long. And if they pull it out tonight, it'll be a proven show of resiliency. Horace Simmons Jr. inside, and he is fouled. Yeah, Simmons fouled hard right there. Going up against that one against uh, Milan Dean, I mean, there's obviously going to be a lot of contact. Um, he's a, a ferocious player uh, for the Vikings, and, you know, that contact is definitely expected there. Horace Simmons able to draw that one. Two shots upcoming for the senior. See that there, Tim Jennings replaced by Hayes Altamare in the line. For box out purposes, Jennings with the two personal fouls and LaSalle a little short in the front court. They don't want him to pick up a cheap one going for an offensive rebound. Yeah, of course, and you know that, that's a player that you really do love to have, um, especially a player like Carson Howard um, coming out uh, towards that, uh, that low paint. You know, he's a nice matchup, um, Tim on Howard, so that, I love to see that. Jaleel Bethea starting to get it going. He's got the last six for Archbishop Wood. Yeah, Bethea right there, beautiful stroke. Fired that one off from deep. Just enough space for him to do his magic. Horace Simmons Jr., that's a tough shot. Wow. Horace Simmons, the acrobatics right there. Again, Bob, he makes it look effortless. And we saw a lot of that shot against Father Judge. They were nailed time and time again. That's a foul there and a late there whistle. A yeah, nice draw right there. 5.36 to play. A yeah, nice draw right there uh, by Fleming. Uh, again, you know, this game's just going to increasingly get uh, more physical. And that's something that both teams are going to have to kind of, uh, you know, get themselves accustomed to. Um, there will be a lot of whistles uh, throughout the second half of this game. There already have been. Um, that number can only increase at this point. Milan Dean picked up the personal foul. That's the team's second here in the second half. Archbishop Wood now throwing some zone at LaSalle. Skip pass for Casey Fleming. Hayes out tomorrow, an open three. Good rebound by Archbishop Wood. Here's Josh Reed. Stutter Ooh. step, Howard fouled, and it should be in the act. It looked it. It definitely looked it. There's Jennings. There's Jennings there coming in late. Yeah, it's water bottle. <laughs> well, I guess that'll be a What's lost that? water bottle. Right? That'll be a donation right there to Archbishop Wood. Uh, we'll, we'll get down there. <laughs> no, Th it's, this is it's, Catholic it's, League basketball right here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks, we had a water bottle here spill underneath. Um, and for those of you who uh, are familiar with Archbishop Wood, uh, these are very steep bleachers up here, Bob. And, you know, uh, that, that uh, water bottle falls through the cracks. <laughs> it could be a goner. Nah. Could be a goner. Nah. We got, uh, we got to get down and get the power cord, extension cord anyway. <laughs> We're in a good spot here. Could be worse. At least it's not a phone or car keys. I'll Isn't it one of those water bottles that, you know, can brace for impact and can, you know, survive the apop apocalypse? Oh, sure. I've had it for a long time. Horace Simmons Jr. is fouled. You can count wow. it at one. Horace Simmons, electric right there. 
Fired up to get that call, sent to the line. That's a huge one for the Explorers. They're really getting back in this one. Yeah, and just the hand was not quite vertical, as you see on the replay there. Josh Reed. And, you know, John Mosco here on the sideline for Wood, arguing the travel right there. I don't think there was a travel. Yeah, I couldn't see that one. Sometimes you just tip your cap as a defender. Horace Simmons, that's a big time play. Four minutes and 17 seconds left. LaSalle back into the zone. Archbishop Wood, to their credit, has created some pretty good looks out of this zone. Or against the zone that LaSalle puts in. It's based on their ability to get the ball to the middle of the zone and collapse the defense. Haven't been able to do that on this possession quite yet. Deep three for Bethea. And Sorge is there. Team rebounding by LaSalle. They can take the lead on this possession. Yeah, one score game right here. This is a huge possession for the Explorers. Just looking to get ahead. Casey Fleming has the matchup he wants. That's a floater. Wow, Fleming with the floater right there. It's smooth, it's silky. Gets the job done for the Explorers. We are having a tie ball game. Foul, count it, and one. And it's Ryan Sorge bringing the hands down. Boy, if you're going to foul him, you got to foul him hard. And LaSalle's had a couple of those where yep. it's a soft one that really doesn't inhibit the shooter's ability to put it up over the rim and into the cylinder. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, definitely a tough play right there. Just met with just enough uh, contact to, to get that one to go for Carson Howard. Time called right now. Time out on the floor. Chance for us to tell you about our friends at CJO Design and Construction. CJO Design and Construction is a landscape contractor that'll come to your home or place of business and make sure that you are taken care of. That can be new mulch here in the spring. That can be putting down seed, weed, and feed, making sure that all that pre-emergence so those weeds don't pop up, that all that is in place. Or they can help you clear out the brush, put in a new deck or patio, or even put in a pool for you. Make sure you get on their calendar by visiting them at cjodesignandconstruction.com. Tell Chad Ormond, our good buddy and strong sponsor, that Bob Long Sports sent you. Carson Howard is three for three from the line tonight. Archbishop Wood got the answer on that last possession. Now a three-point game once again. James Barchak, it hung on the rim. A tough, tough play right there for Barchak. Josh Reed. Deep three for Jaleel Bethea. Bethea right there from downtown right there. That's division one range. Just shooting over top of that zone. Barchak, timeout. Timeout called by Mike McKee. Two minutes and 39 seconds to play in the third quarter. This portion of today's game is brought to you by E&M Insurance in, uh, in North Wales. Chris Marr, class of 1989, does a great job with his property and casualty firm. Also sent two sons to LaSalle, very involved with the Alumni Association Board. Uh, maybe you have a youthful aged child that's about to get his or her license. Make sure to call Chris, and he can get you to take care of one of his tremendous and well-qualified agents will take you through the process. Their website, eandminsurance.com. Their phone number, 215-368-9555. That's 215-368-9555.
Archbishop Wood in that zone. Nick McKee, the sophomore. Sal in huge need of a score right here. Down six. Just the best option available for Simmons. Bingo! Bingo is right. What a great look right there. One score game here for the Explorers. Huge defensive possession coming up. Green for three, it's good! And we're trading threes here at Archbishop Wood High School. Boy, did they give him a long two there, okay. Yeah, wow. I guess foot might have been on the line right there, Bob. That, that's a little bit of a break for the Explorers. Certainly had a better angle than we did on that far side of the floor. Yeah, I think you need some ball movement here. There's Ryan Warren with a touch. Casey Fleming, nice Ooh. floater, body control. Yeah, Fleming, beautiful floater right there. Like you said, Bob, maintain composure in the paint. That was nicely done. And Dixon and Green, beg, they beg your pardon, Salem not on the same page with Marcus Dixon. Well, Dixon on the other end was coming out to block that floater from Casey Fleming, so just kind of rises up, keeps control of the body, and floats it over top. It's a high-level play from a sophomore, getting key varsity experience here. Nick McKee into traffic, and he's fouled. A nice foul drawn right there, Nick McKee. Huge scoring opportunity here once more for the Explorers. And it goes against Michael Green. It's a deadly spin move. Sometimes it can get you into trouble. That wide spin move, you don't know who's on the other end of it. But that time, sliced to an angle and created the contact. It's part of this sophomore class, as is this guy, Nick Parisi. More and more of these sophomores getting more and more time as the year goes along. And you can imagine a, a situation if things go well for LaSalle the next few years where you have the uh, Hayes Altamares, the Casey Flemings, Nick yep. McKee, Nick Parisi, Ryan Warren, Cam Smith is a sophomore as well. I, I know there's another one or two I'm missing. Yes, no, Bob, I agree. You know, a lot of future, uh, a, lot of, a lot of youth um, within this program. Wow. Count it and one for Jaleel Bethea. Yeah, Jaleel Bethea has been taking advantage of this third quarter of basketball. Come alive, showing the score that he really is. What a phenomenal trip to the basket right there. Earning his spot from the stripe. Phenomenal play. One minute, four seconds to play in the third quarter. But Thea is having a quarter here. Five point lead for Archbishop Wood. Oh. Here's Fleming. He dives all the way. He's. Boy, I tell you what. Wow. They're the whistle stays silent. Yeah, they're keeping the basketball with the Sal, but yeah, I agree. No call right there. Another look. He comes all the way through, and he is tripped from behind there by Deuce Maxi. It was not called. I don't know about that one, Bob. I just don't know about that one. Thirty-four seconds left in the third quarter. It's a five-point contest. Sal in no hurry right here. Simmons puts up a tough one. That's well short. A tough look right there. Now 15 seconds left, Bethea.
Here's Gus Salem with three. Bethea gets a good look at it. Halfway down. Mm -hmm. Perhaps that snatches LaSalle right back into this game. A three there would have been an early dagger for Archbishop Wood. It'll be LaSalle, or I beg your pardon, Archbishop Wood ball to start the fourth quarter. This portion of today's game brought to you by Jim McLaughlin, Carrie Garen Boyle. Of the Carrie Garen Boyle team at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Fox and Roach Realtors. Our favorite LaSalle Realtors. If you're looking to buy or sell your home anytime in the near future, give them a call. Their contact information is below. And they'll help you through the entire process. A personal testimonial here uh, from my end. They do a great job for myself and my family. We almost lost a piece of equipment there. Beg your pardon, folks. But Jim McLaughlin and Gary Garen Boyle are the best, and we would wholeheartedly recommend them for anybody that is or will be in the market real soon. Call them at the number listed below and tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you. We'll also tell you about Next Play Basketball, an AAU basketball organization run by Ryan Ansel and Matt Paul, doing everything from individual instruction to group clinics to AAU basketball teams from fourth grade through 12th grade, boys and girls. It's all about that next play mentality. They'll tell you all about it. Follow them on Facebook. Reach out to our friends Ryan Ansel or Matt Paul and tell them that Bob Long Sports sent you. Okay, Danny, fourth quarter coming up. Your thoughts, your keys for the next eight minutes. Well, so I said before, um, you know, a player like uh, Jalil Bethea, uh, he only scored three points in that first half, but that second half, he came alive. That third quarter, uh, I beg your pardon, um, it was amazing uh, to see him really put on a show there. It was also amazing to see Horace Simmons put on a show there as well. So I'd love to see those two players go toe to toe here as we enter this highly contested fourth quarter. Jaleel Bethea, there's a shooter's roll. Quality look from the foul line. Danger zone here for LaSalle, down seven. Simmons through traffic. And Carson Howard brought it down. Three on two. Here's the lob! Milan Dean. Milan Dean with authority, Bob. What a throwdown. That was a thing of beauty. He comes over to the scores table, and he is fired up right now. Nine point lead for the Vikings of Archbishop Wood. Big time bucket. Nine points. By my count, largest lead of the night for Archbishop Wood. Thunderous. Absolutely. Phenomenal read. Great vision on the lob up there. That's going to require a first-class flight to jam <laughs> town, Bob. First-class flight. No delays on the tarmac tonight. My goodness. Coming in for, uh, actually going off for takeoff, I should say. <laughs> Not even coming in for landing. Well, with this context, let's, let's take a look at the standings as they currently sit now. This is not live, so our St. Joe's Prep sits at eight and two because they beat Father Judge today. Father Judge now four and six in the lead, in the league, still hanging on to that nine spot as of right now. They'll play, you know, they got the Devon Prep, um, you know, head to head there. That could loom large as the season comes to a conclusion. Archbishop Wood looking to match St. Joe's Prep which basically would make Monday's game a must win for both teams. Archbishop Wood winning tonight and on Monday against St. Joe's Prep would give those two teams the same record and Archbishop Wood would have the head to head as it pertains to seeding for PCL playoffs and potentially PC, uh, PIAA entry qualifications as well. A lot at stake. And LaSalle on the other end, they got to find a way to come back into this game and squeeze out another win or two after this one in the next two weeks if they want to return to the playoffs. They were a five seed in last year's Catholic League playoffs, did graduate three senior starters. But they came from a 
Missed three away from going to overtime on the road at Newman Caretti in a quarterfinal. To look into come back here and make a late playoff push. That'll help. KC Fleming counted and won. Yeah, and the late whistle right there on a play like Fleming, that's a great call. Met with a lot of contact at the hoop. I'd be shocked if that one wasn't a foul. So phenomenal call there for the refs. And Fleming that time. Milan Dean, a little too aggressive. He beats him. Carson Howard. The one to pick it up. A huge three-point play right there. Oh. Almost. Unfortunate. Three-point play opportunity, that is. 6-18 to play, fourth quarter. Deuce Maxi. the lane opens up. Wow, Maxi switching hands midair. That right there is a beautiful lay. And Explorers right now looking to move as efficient as possible. Time is ticking here for a late comeback. Seniors, three of them on the floor right now, but sophomores have certainly spent more time on the floor in the aggregate than seniors have today. Win or lose, what an experience for a sophomore group. That's a senior there though, Ryan Sorge cuts it back to six. That's a huge bucket there for Ryan Sorge. It will let that one fly. Three ball, six point game, two possessions here for the Explorers. We still got a ball game on our hands, Bob. Well, Danny, we are in the penultimate weekend of the right. regular season here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Thoughts on the league thus far? I mean, it's and the been opportunities amazing. Um, and what you've seen from across the league. Yeah, so we have our cameraman, Brady Joyce, right now. He's at the stream uh, live from Newman Garetti, Roman Catholic. That one is 61-51. Newman is leading on their home court. Uh, Bob, I mean, this season's been nothing short of amazing, uh, as per usual. Like we said at the beginning of the year, um, you know, the, the, the we believe that there are really 10 teams uh, in this league that can make uh, a great push um, once they get the ticket into yeah. the playoffs. And so many things can happen right now. Um, it's really, really starting to get interesting here um, throughout, you know, all of these, uh, these matchups that we see, um, you know, night after night. Um, it's been an amazing season, and that's just some of the magic here that occurs in the Philadelphia region. It's such a basketball-rich region, uh, so much talent, uh, so many commits, so many recruits, uh, you know, all dispersed uh, throughout Montgomery, Bucks, Chester, and Philadelphia County. It's really a sight to see. There's a grab inside. Just the fifth team foul against LaSalle in the second half. Tough foul right here. Wood underneath the basket. And no rush. Finding Deuce Maxi at the top of the key. Deuce Maxi! That was halfway down. And that should be Archbishop Wood basketball. Yep, that's wow. the right call. Yeah, Bob, I'd say halfway down, maybe even 75%. Three yeah. quarters down. In and out. The Vikings here with the opportunity for another chance at a score to extend this one beyond a two-score lead. Maxi gets to a good spot, and it's blocked by Horace Simmons. That might have been on the way down. Yeah, a lot of fans over here in the woods section, uh, you know, leading towards that uh, goaltending call. It's tough. That's for a debate right there. Nick McKee spins again. How about that finish? Nick McKee right there off the spin. Such a, such a, a, a crafty player right there. Elusive. Gets beyond the defense. And he needed the English as well. Yeah, exactly. And to play like that, size does not matter. Jaleel Bethea. Jaleel Bethea right there. The That's answer. a highlight play. That is a highlight play. The answer is right. Fleming. That is a pro level no play. call. And there's contact. It'll be the sixth team foul against LaSalle. That was on the floor. Yeah, it's not a sequence that you'd like to see right there. Tough foul under the basket. Bob, I'm sure that the bonus is looming eventually for the Vikings. One more foul. Yeah, so. And they'll be in the bonus. Yikes. South to maintain as disciplined as they are, ferocious wins one. 
You also don't want to give up an easy one there yep. in transition. You can understand that foul. Ryan Swords not in foul trouble at this point. Here's Jaleel Bethea. Endless range for him. Instead, there's Maxi. Josh Reed. And he is fouled. I think that was actually a pass intended for Carson Howard. And they see that as a shot. Wow. That's interesting. Let's get another look here. Yeah, perhaps he was shooting that ball. I don't, I don't know, though. I don't know. I'm not sure as well. They give him the two-shot foul. Four oh five to play, fourth quarter. Every one of those are important. Yep. Josh Reed misses the first. Yeah, this stage of the game, extremely important. Again, looming large there, that call of a two shot foul versus a one and one, missing the first. Can't cash in on either, though, and Horace Simmons brings it down with the one hand. Now under four minutes here, the six-point ball game. Another giveaway by LaSalle. Hayes out to Mare. This is interesting here. <laughs> That's well after the whistle. Yeah, that was... Climbed onto the back of Simmons Jr. Questionable play right there. I mean, yeah. the, the whistle's there. Uh, there's the tail end of it. Too many live ball turnovers here in the second half if you're LaSalle. Turnovers in general. Bethea. Big front end here. Calmly hits it. Liam Hawley checked into the game. Nick Parisi back in as well. Two of two for Jaleel Bethea having one of those nights. Simmons Jr. Rises and couldn't hit it. What a rebound. Milan Dean. Ooh. What do we have here? I guess the same before the shot. It'll be a grab against LaSalle. He also put that oh. head down. Okay, and Just wow, drove so into the body. In the act then. Nope, it'll be just the front end. Ninth team foul. Archbishop Woods starting to hit those free throws. This is where it really starts to extend that lead. Well, you look at those last three or four possessions, right? A couple of turnovers, a really difficult shot. And every one of those things creates a run out opportunity for this Archbishop Wood team. You're playing into their style. And they're one of the best in the state at that. 3.21 to go. If LaSalle has a chance, they have to go now. Simmons Jr., another one just a little long. Tough miss right there, off the rim. Josh Reed attacks. Offensive foul. Wow. Casey Fleming stands in. That'll be Hayes out tomorrow, ah, you're right. Yeah, Hayes wow. out tomorrow. Still, though, phenomenal uh, defensive play right there. Feet planted, like you said, stood in that. 
Scores with the ball back, down 10. Time is ticking here. Nick Parisi for three. Nick McKee fouls Jaleel Bethea, 2.47 to go. Double bonus the rest of the way for Archbishop Wood. Our guy, Brendan Olympo, would know a lot better than us, but Bethea, really a fantastic second half. Huge scoring night for him. He had only three, remember, Bob, in that, uh, that first half of play. He has just come alive and put on a show in the Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium tonight. Timeout called by John Mosco. Danny, tell us what's going on around the halls at LaSalle these days. Well, around the halls, Bob, I mean, there's been a lot of buzz about uh, all of our winter teams, uh, this basketball team included, as we, you know, uh, get near to the uh, PCL playoffs, just looking to make that push in there. Um, you know, a couple great things going on around campus. Uh, we have our, our musical coming up, I'm sure. Um, that'll be uh, on the horizon soon. Um, you know, it's, it's uh, a bunch of things uh, going on around school. Um, the new website uh, for LaSalle just uh, released, if you're interested in that. Um, I know that was a, uh, a, a nice release uh, for the uh, WXP department and then for a lot of guys down in the lab. Um, so it, the campus has been, uh, it's been quite active recently. Right now we have uh, Newman and Roman right here in a tight contest. That 10-point lead, say goodbye to that. Newman is up 61-60 on home court. It's coming down to the wire here in South Philadelphia for a scoring update here. Same here, 2.40 to go. LaSalle needs some buckets. Horace Simmons, Jr. It's 64-55. Jaleel Bethea, tough shot. And short numbers here for LaSalle. It's four on one. Parisi, great look. Here we go, seven point contest. LaSalle back into that zone. Might have to get into some traps here, Danny, as well, because Bethea has no obligation nor incentive to take this ball inside the three point line. Altamari picks up the personal. Had to do it, yep. just the. I don't know if there's a wrong guy to foul, but if there is, it's probably him. Yeah, I would agree, Bob. Absolutely deadly from the line. But you had to deliver a foul there somewhere. One of two for Jaleel Bethea. It's almost surprising when it doesn't go in. Dangerous pass. Barchak. And Maxi comes down with it. Archbishop Wood will come into the half court and wait for a foul. There it comes from Horace Simmons Jr. Maxi to the line for two. Altamare and Sorge in replacing James Barchak. See what Archbishop Wood did there. Now, Carson Howard is three for three from the line tonight, so certainly hasn't been any issues from him there, but a defensive stalwart there. Yeah. 
trying to coerce a stop. Offense, defense type of substitution for John Mosco. 132 to go. Final quarter of play. Fleming, he'll get all the way to the 10. Too strong. Salem had to throw it back in bounds, and Carson Howard is indeed fouled. A buck 23 to go. So LaSalle, they may come up just a bit short here tonight. A valiant effort. Still a minute 23 to go. But, yeah, but. but a step forward for a team that hasn't been as competitive the last few weekends against the team that was runner-up at the large school classification last year. Yeah, LaSalle able to hang, you know, a, a great three and a half quarters um, with this uh, Archbishop Wood team. Um, you know, a tremendous effort from all, all five and, and then some on the floor tonight. Um, it, was, it was great to be able to see. Um, you know, like you said, uh, maybe it could be a little bit of a momentum shift for the Explorers. Um, you know, like you said, struggled in, in recent weekends, but this could be a game that a lot of positives are built on uh, for these final three remaining games. They take on Roman Catholic. Um, who I believe, Brady, I believe Roman Catholic uh, ended up falling to Newman Goretti uh, on the road. They will wow. face the Kaolites at uh, Thomas Jefferson East Falls Campus on uh, Sunday afternoon. Um, and then that should be a phenomenal game, of course. And then, uh, oh, this will be a loose ball. What a play there. Jaleel Bethea. Bethea getting up there, taking off. Fleming is fouled. And what a play right there. Jalil Bethea sees the open lane, attacks it with ease. He's going for takeoff out of Warminster tonight, Bob. Warminster International Airport right here. <laughs> Better known as the Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium. What a slam. Brian Warren, Liam Hawley check in. Replacing James Barchak and Horace Simmons Jr. Two seniors coming off the floor. One of two. Final minute here from Archbishop Wood. They took a gut punch early from LaSalle, did the Vikings. Hung in there. And on the back of Jaleel Bethea, an incredible second half that only continues. Had three at the break. He's going to have a heck of a lot more than that. Liam Hawley halfway down. Warren grabs it with two hands and puts it back. Timeout on the floor. And that'll be just to keep the substitutions going. Wholesale substitutions. Yep. And how about this hand? Scoop Gardner will be going in for the Vikings. It's like a complete starter shift. And the student section re really appreciating the effort of their veterans here tonight. Yeah, phenomenal showing right there. Wood played with exemplary resilience to fend off the Explorers. It's a fan favorite here, a little strong. Warren brings it down. All the phones come up trying to record history there. Nick Parisi fouled with seven seconds left. Final seconds, Archbishop Wood gets the win here at home. An impressive second half. They put 43 points on the board in the last 16 minutes and beat LaSalle 72-62.
I'm going to sneak down and try to get an interview with Jaleel Bethea. Danny, take it away. Yeah, well, ladies and gentlemen, we witnessed a phenomenal PCL matchup here tonight. Tremendous game played by both sides. Wood ended up taking that one out. 72-62 is a 10-point victory for the Vikings. Huge PCL win as well um, as regards to standings within the upcoming playoffs. Uh, both teams will uh, have three games remaining on their schedule. Um, you know, of course, this uh, part of the season uh, remains ever important for the Explorers and the Vikings. And uh, we look to send it down to Bob here. Uh, Bob is with number one, Jalil Bethea, the man from the Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium here tonight. And Bob, we'll send it down to you shortly. All right, so Bob is down here. Bob, take it away. We are here amidst a, a flurry of activity here. What an atmosphere this evening. Jaleel Bethea, John Mosco alongside. We'll start with you. Jaleel, three points at the break we had you at. Second half, not so much. What changed for you? You know, it was just keep my head. Like, I just let the game come to me in the second half. That's like, that's like the reason why that all that happened. I got my teammates involved first, and then it came to me. Everything just fell in place. The vision. When you threw that ball up for Milan Dean, about where we're standing here, you let that ball go, and he went up and got it. What was that like? It's just the chemistry that we have off the court. Like, the chemistry we got off the court, it just leads onto the court. And then that's just how we connected on that lob right there. And a big momentum play for us. It was a big moment in the game, and not to be denied, you yourself got to do a nice little chin up on the rim as well. When you have that open lane and you know it's, it's time for takeoff, what's that like? It, it's a great feeling. You all there by yourself, and all you got to do is just finish it over butter rim. We've had the opportunity to be here a couple times, watch your team, Jaleel, and what we've seen every time we've been here, you're a second-half team and you're a second-half player. What's the mindset there? Is, is that something that just comes naturally? Uh, no, not really. I feel like it just, I don't even know how to even explain that. I wouldn't say I'm a second half player. I mean, I feel like I'm an all game type player. You sure are, by the way. You're a first half player like, too. <laughs> I just want to thank my teammates, especially Milan Dean. He over there with the girls and stuff. But like. Sorry to keep you from that, by the way. No, I'm, I'm cool. I don't need no, I'm cool. Well, I appreciate your time. I'll let you celebrate with your teammates. I'll steal your coach. Thank you, Jaleel. John, every time we come here, we have some fun, man. These are some fantastic games. Tonight, a great second half effort. Yeah, we did. Uh, first half, you know, they, we made them dictate the pace, and they were able to stay in the zone a lot more, and they were taking Jaleel away. We made the adjustment a little bit. We put the ball in his hands a lot more in the second half, and he's able to make passes, like you said. He's able to find people. He hits the middle, we were able to hit Josh and Mayer, and they were able to tack and then swing it to Deuce. You know, I feel like Deuce should be a starter, but he gives us a lot of energy off the bench. Um, and, you know, he closes out games for us. So we feel that we're, we're starting to hit our stride. We're a little deeper right now than, you know, than we were in the beginning. We had two sophomores and now they're juniors by this time of the year. So, and we want to play out in the open and that's, we were able to rebound they were able to miss shots, rebound, and push the ball. I think Josh Reed, Milan Dean, hell, heck of a game from him, and Jaleel Bethea. That, that's a star-studded backcourt. All of them give you a little bit of size, some strength, and, and everything they do handle in the basketball. Right. And we're able to switch on guys defensively, and they get all guard when they want to guard. So this was probably Mir's best game of the year, all 32 minutes of. And you can't forget, like, Mike Green, who comes in in the first half, they're all – they're all looking at Jalil or Gus, and he's hitting shot after shot. So, you know, he's, he's got a quick release, and he gets to hit his shots. Now, I know you wouldn't talk to me about it pregame. Of course, you got this game in front of you. But Monday at Kelly Fieldhouse, St. Joe's we Prep. Go play Sunday first. There you go. So, so, We're playing Parkland at Parkland in a shootout. But I think, you know, this is what you come to the, to the Catholic League about. I, I've been telling them the same speech. Don't look at LaSalle with their record. They got a good team, a great team. They're not quitting. They're not giving up. They fought us tooth and nail, you know, and our style gives up some points because we want to push the ball. We, we shoot freely. But at the end of the day, you know, um, it's going to be another war on Monday. 
then you still got to go to the Bird Dome and play over there, and then you know, and then the playoffs wherever we end up. So it's a it's a crazy league as you know. And ultimate weekend. Good luck the rest of the way. We'll be watching closely. Yeah, yeah this game ended up being a war. You got Roman at Newman, and then you had um, Ryan and West. So a lot of games. But thanks for being here. We're we're thrilled to be here. Thrilled to be associated with you guys. Thanks for having us. Have a good one. We'll see you down the road. Look forward to that. John Mosco, our guest. Thanks for him to spend so much time with us here. Danny, back to you. Yeah, Bob, uh, tremendous interview, uh, you know, as usual between, um, you know, uh, the star of the night, Jalil Bathia, and then obviously the coach of the night, uh, John Musco. Um, that was an amazing job right there. And uh, two very well-spoken individuals uh, for this Archbishop Wood team. I love what I saw from Jalil Bathia tonight, and I love the way that John Musco coaches the guys game in, game out. It was a nice game against LaSalle College High School, 72-62 win at home. Brady Joyce on the camera, Bob Long, our main man from the booth, me, Danny Rovey, running color commentary here from the Richard R. Kelly Gymnasium in Warmester, Pennsylvania. Have a great night.